and we're going to talk about DNA. Anybody knows what DNA is? Who guys thinks DNA is? Jevin? It's like the, it's, well, it's the blueprint of life. Okay, so if you read off the slides, it's the blueprint of life. So anything not from the slides, what you think DNA is, Natalie? It's like the basis of all your characteristics. So now it's the basics of your characteristics, Kendall? Like genetic makeup and stuff. Genetic makeup. Nick, you had an idea? Genetic makeup? Yeah. So Gavin started off by saying it's the blueprint of life. So what is a blueprint? So like it's like instruction. Like no, it's like the overview. So like say you're making a kitchen, you're drawing a blueprint of what's gonna like be in that kitchen, like where everything's gonna be. Okay, so it's like the outline. It's where everything it says where everything's gonna be, what's it gonna it's gonna look like. So of like a house. You have like all your rooms, your furniture, where your doors go, where the entryways are, where your stairs are. Mm -hmm. Iron Man, all the parts of Iron Man, they, there's a blueprint for Iron Man. So it's the blueprint, it's the outline for, you know, for life. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So D is for deoxyribo, the N in DNA is nucleic, and then it's a, that's all one word, and then acid is a separate word that makes up DNA. I don't expect you guys to know how to spell this word with you just have to know what it is. You see DNA, you have to recognize that that's deoxynucleic acid, or deoxyribonucleic acid, I won't ask you to spell it. If you see deoxyribonucleic <coughs> acid, you just have to recognize that that's <coughs> DNA. Our DNA is found in our cells. All of our cells contain our DNA. More specifically, it's found inside the nucleus. So within our nucleus, what's in our nucleus of our cells? It's all. Um, Talking about this at the beginning of the unit. Yeah, okay, you know, chromosomes. And our DNA is located on our chromosomes. So this is the chromosome, the little X shape. And then with, on the chromosome is our DNA. This is a strand of DNA. Cool. Oh, so it's a spiral. Yeah, what's the, do you remember what that's called? Do you remember what the shape is? Oh, like is? a Right, trick of math. Yeah, double helix, the shape. Uh, DNA, the shape of DNA was discovered by um, two scientists. Um, that was just DNA. Uh, two scientists, Watson and Crick, uh, they discovered the shape of the double helix in 1953. They actually won the Nobel Prize in Science for the discovery of the shape of DNA. However, they weren't the uh, first person to actually identify that shape or notice that shape. Uh, it was actually found by a woman scientist named Rosalind Franklin. She did not win the Nobel Prize. In fact, she didn't even get recognized for it until more recently that she had anything to do with the discovery of DNA. Maybe they just stole uh, What had happened is that she had taken pictures of like the chromosome and the DNA, and then somebody showed those pictures to Watson and Crick, and they had been coming up with a, you know, hypothesizing what the shape of DNA was. Was it a single helix? Was it a triple helix? And she had taken this picture. She hadn't published it yet. And somebody took the picture and showed it to Watson and Crick. And from that picture, Watson and Crick were able to determine that it's a double box. And they published their findings. They got her the credit. They didn't give her any credit for it. Did they oh. know that she had the picture? Yeah. Sure. Um, that does happen, though, from time to time. And especially you know, back in that time, it was very difficult for women and minorities to get recognition or to be able to even publish things that they found. Uh, who here has heard of the movie um, that just came out? Hidden Figures. Oh, I saw that. I that was okay. really good. So, Hidden Figures, based on a true story, based on real women. 
that until recently nobody knew about, but they were vital in all the early NASA programs. They were a group of African American women. So not only the minority of being a woman, but also African American at that time, got very little to no recognition until recently. Um, someone like Emmy Noter is very, um, okay. nowadays, famous and important mathematician. She came up with a lot of theories and mathematical concepts that we use in math and science. Uh, she didn't get a lot of credit when she was doing that because of being a woman in Germany. She couldn't uh, work in a school. She couldn't like be a professor. She couldn't publish a lot of her work being a woman, so she had to publish under colleagues' names. So the male, her male colleague she published under, he got the credit, and she'd get a little notification, you know, notoriety saying that she worked on it, but he's the one who did the work. So that's what happens back then. Nowadays, far less of an issue. So like when you guys become scientists, women especially, far less issues with getting credit for things that you just have. It happens a lot more often. Uh, the shape is the double helix. And DNA is really just the code for your genes or your traits. So the traits we talked about with pedigrees and Punnett squares, the DNA is that code. And DNA, the strain of DNA, that, that double helix is made of repeating units called the nucleotide. Each nucleotide, there's a six repeating series of nucleotides that make up an entire strand of DNA. <coughs> this is a nucleotide, or an image of a nucleotide. It has three parts. It has a phosphate, a sugar, or a deoxyribose, and a base, A, C, G, or C. And there's four different bases that could be in a nucleotide. There's adenine, thionine, guanine, and cytosine. They're represented just by letters. So A for adenine, T for thionine, G for guanine, C for cytosine. One of those bases will be in each nucleotide. A and T and G and C always pair up together. They're called complementary. So you'll always see an A paired with a T on one side and the other of a double helix. And a G and a C always paired up, one side or the other. So you'll never see a G paired with a T or a C paired with a T. G with an A and C with a T. All these A and T will be paired together, one side, the other side, C and G. They're called complementary base pairs. And if you remember this using a mnemonic, mnemonic is just kind of a phrase that helps you remember how things fit together. So if you remember A and T are complementary because apples are in trees. Apples grow on trees. And if we said, for C and G, if we said cars for C, cars. what do yes. so, Gas. Good. Say gas. I would say cars. <coughs> no, cars go on green. Oh. Cars go on the garage. Apples are in the trees. Cars are in the garage. Cars need gas. I like cars go on green. Cars go on green. Cars go on green colors. Oh. So CG and GC go together. So apples in the tree, cars in the garage. So what do you mean? Mnemonic? Oh. That's the mnemonic. It's a sign of oh. The complementary base field rule. That's that complementary base field rule is that one base will always go with that other base. So if we have an A, adenine, adenine will always go with T, 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 I mean. <coughs> Guanine will always go with? Cytosine. Cytosine, G with C. 
You don't have to remember the words, just the letters. So A and T and G and C will always be on either side. Does not no, if you have C on one side, so we have a C down here, the other side's G. We have a G here, the other side's C. We have an A and a T. If the T's on this side, the A's on the other side. Going down, there's no particular order. That doesn't matter. It's the pair is just the other side of the rung. So if you think of it as a spiral ladder, where you have rungs, the bases make the rungs. Two pair, a pair of bases makes a full rung. The rungs are going to be made up of those complementary base pairs. So it's an A and T makes one full rung, and a G and a C makes a full rung. You won't be able to make a full rung with a G and a T. And then the outsides of the ladder are made up of those phosphates and sugars. So if I have one side of my double helix and the bases are go A, T, A, the other side of the helix would be which bases? T, A, T. Mic up. If one side of the DNA strand is bases T, C, A, what's the other side going to be? complementary base pair for C. We have a C, what do you have? What's the other number? We have a C, what do you have a G. G, so you have A, G, T. If I have T, G, C, Haley, what would my base pair be on the other side, or my other base would be? So it would be three bases. What three bases would be on the other side? What base goes with T's? A and G, C and C, G. So it would have A, C, G. So it would be that other base that's paired with it. So if you have a T, you always have an A. If you have a G, the other one's a C. If you have a C, the other one's a G. What about the last one, G, T, G? No. C, A, C. C, A, C. So we have an A here. The other paired base will be a T. We have a C here. So it's the, that other complementary pair. So the pairs are always together. If you have one of the letters, the other letter of that pair will be on the other side. Kennel? I don't understand how you got the letters. The what? Okay, so our base pairs are what? What two letters? Go to? A and T go together and C and G go together. So if we know one side is an A, the other side has to be a T. If one side's a T, the other side has to be A. A. One side's an A, the other side has to be a T. If it's a C, the other side's a G. So whatever your one side is, that other pair, the other base in that base pair will be that base on that other side. Does that make a little more sense, everybody? Yeah. Did that clear that up, Kendall? Yeah. Okay. It didn't let me know. Did that not clear it up for anybody? So I'll re-explain it for you. It's pretty much the opposite. It's, yeah, it's that opposite pair. So if you have an A, the other side will be T. If you have a T, the other <coughs> side's an A. If you have a G, the other side's a C. If you have a C, the other side's a G. There's only one other option. You won't get two of the same letters next to each other. You won't get one of the other letters with one of these letters. It's always one and the other. You always have those two in a pair. So talking about DNA and proteins. These aren't all in order, so you may have to flip around. We cut out a lot of the notes. Because there's a lot of information on DNA. 
we thought were a little more advanced than what you guys need to really cover right now because we'll do a lot when you get into a living environment and biology in high school. We'll go over a lot of this. So DNA is a recipe. So if we think of a recipe, what does a recipe do? Like, what is it, Kevin? It's just instructions. Yeah, it's instructions to make something. So yeah. recipe to bake a cake is the instructions to make a cake. So the DNA is a recipe that describes how and when to build protein. Any of the slides we don't cover in class, you don't need to know for the quiz. You don't have to go over. Just so you guys know. Uh, what proteins are? Proteins do mo much of the cell's work. So they're what actually functions within a cell. Do all the cellular functions. Proteins are coded by the DNA. Which is located in the nucleus of the cell but they're not made in the nucleus. They're actually made in the ribosomes in the cell. So you can think of it this way. If you have an architect, an architect's the one who draws the blueprints for a building. He does that in his office. The office is the nucleus. But then those blueprints get taken to the contractor, which is outside of the office. The contractor, where the contractor is, those that's like the ribosomes. And then the contractor builds the building. Those are the proteins. <coughs> Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Anybody tell me what a mutation is? A mutation? Is it like a change in the no. Is it like a um, Kevin says it's non-functioning DNA. Anybody else have an idea? No. That's a good, good idea. I like that. Kevin? It's a DNA base to the All right, let's not read off the slide, Kevin. What do you, like, in your own words, what do you think it is? Kendall? Okay, so something goes wrong, like in the body. So if you, yeah, somebody said teenage uh, mutant ninja turtles. So a mutant. So a mutant is like a change. Somebody had a physical or a genetic change. That's what a mutation is. Like a change. It's a change in the DNA. Mutation is when the, the DNA is changed. When your DNA is changed, you're changed. It's a copying error. So when we're, our cells are splitting, the DNA is being copied. Occasionally, in that copying process, there's an error made. So if you guys ever make like copies on a copy machine, and you get like a smudge or something on all the copies you printed out, because there's something wrong with the copier, if you have toner, you get that line down the middle, that's an error in copying. It's changed in the DNA. Would you say that we all have yeah, everybody pretty much has mutation. A lot of mutations that happen in your body don't do anything to really affect you. They're very small. They don't have any like really physical repercussions within your body. What? So if the DNA base is changed when the cotton air base is changed, then the recipe has changed. If the recipe's changed, the directions are changed, change tells you how to make something differently, so the proteins may not function properly because they're not made correctly. So like sickle cell disease is where the wrong hemoglobin protein is made. Uh, hemoglobin is the protein that carries oxygen in your blood cells to the rest of your body. You know, your body can't properly distribute and move oxygen throughout your body. 
Uh, that's what a normal red blood cell looks like. This is what a sickle cell. It's like a cashew. Yeah, cashew. Or a yeah, it's just like kind of that, that like C shaped. Uh, so it can't hold that the oxygen. So you get lack of oxygen in parts of your body. It also the it's shape. They can get stuck together and block your blood blood flow to parts of your body. So it can be really painful. Uh, good thing about having sickle cell anemia is that you can't get malaria. So in areas where malaria, there's a high risk of malaria, like in Africa, there's a lot of people who have sickle cell disease because they don't die from malaria, they can't contract it. But they have a lot of other health issues from sickle cell. In the US, there's very little risk of malaria, but also have a lower prevalence of getting sickle cell. In Africa, there's also a lot of people who are heterozygous for sickle cell anemia. So they have the trait, they don't have the trait. It's a recessive trait. So they don't actually have sickle cell, but they still have that gene which protects them from getting malaria. So they can't really get malaria, but they also don't have the health issues associated with sickle cell. And they can reproduce more. And that's why there are also more people with sickle cell because those recessive genes get passed down more often than they do here. It's also why we have to get, take medication if we if you want to go to like Africa or like we're in parts of Asia where there's regular malaria <coughs> because we don't have that gene, the DNA, to protect us from that. So for sickle cell, only need, um, for these kind of DNA errors, only the mutations in sex cells get passed out to offspring. So if you have a mutation in your liver cell, that you can't pass it on to your kids because you don't pass your liver cell on. It only happens in your gametes. So if there's a DNA error when making your gametes, your sperm or your egg cells, if that occurs in one of those cells, you will pass those on. So how the code works, I think it's a couple pages before. So the combination of your bases, the A's, T's, G's, and C's, they all determine your traits. So they tell you what you're going to be, what you're going to look like. So for example, you have a combination of six <coughs> bases, C-A-T, C-A-T, you could have purple hair. If your sixth combination for hair color is TAC, TAC, you can be born with yellow hair. If it's ATC, ATC, you could have green hair. So that combination is what gives you your traits. And they're like letters. So you have letters. And letters form words. We all know that. If you rearrange a series of letters, you form different words. If you move the words you formed around into different orders, what do you form? Sentence. sentence, and you can move those words around, you form a whole ton of different sentences. So if you have a lot of letters that you can choose from, <coughs> you would pretty much have unlimited and <coughs> endless combinations of sentences or potential traits that you could come with. That's why nobody looks the same. No human looks the same. Unless they're identical twins because then they have the exact same DNA, they have the same bases, so they're being told to look and do the exact same thing. So only identical twins have the same DNA. They're the only ones really that will look exactly the same. Now you may look similar to your parents or a sibling, cousin even, because you share very similar bases, base pairs, but they're not identical, so you'll have slight differences. You get half of them from your mother, half from your father, and how they recombine will make you look a little differently, but you'll have similar features because you're getting similar DNA. So what does DNA stand for? Uh, oh. Yeah, 
deoxyribonucleic acid. What's the shape? Kind of, what's its shape? Double helix, right? right? Who discovered the structure of DNA? There's two people, really three people, but the two people who got credit for it. Is one of them Walter? No. no. Something like that. Uh, James? Uh, James Watson. Close enough. Crick. 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 So it's Watson and Crick. So the way I try to remember it is you ask yourself, what's in a Crick? What's in a Crick? A fish is in a Crick? And fish have DNA. That's how I kind of talk about it. That doesn't help you, don't use it. Uh, what are the four bases that make up the rungs of a DNA letter? Just the letters. Go ahead and go ahead. Uh, yeah. A, T, C. Yeah, A, C, T, and G. Adenine and A always pairs with what, Grace? What do A's pair with? T's. Or thymine. Uh, G <coughs> or guanine always pairs with what then? Uh, C. C, cytosine. The sides of the DNA letter are sugar and what? Zach? Start to the P. Protein. Not protein. Phosphate, very good. So it's sugar and phosphate make the sides, the, the bases make those rungs that go across. You have two bases in every rung, and those are the complementary base pairs. <coughs> so give this complementary base pair sequence a try on your own real quick. See if you can do it, because you do have to know how to do these. So what does that other side look like? We have one side of the base, what does that other side look like? How did we all do on that one? You all got it? Yep. Question again? Nope. Oh. Right. So we're done with the notes. Uh, for the last two minutes, just watch, sit quietly and watch the video. That's due Friday. contains 46 strands of DNA. A single strand is made of millions of particles called nucleotides, and these nucleotides come in four different types, which scientists have labeled A, C, T, and G. A gene is a special stretch of DNA, a sequence of A's, C's, T's, and G's that code for something. A gene contains information for a cell to read and use, but what exactly does that information do? You might have heard that there's a blue-eyed gene, a freckled gene, possibly even an anger gene, but single genes don't literally make things like eyeballs or freckles or temper tantrums. Genes make proteins. Those proteins that interact with each other and all sorts of chemicals inside the body to build things like eye pigments, freckles, and mood-altering hormones. A single strand of DNA contains thousands of genes or unique protein messages. Humans have up to 20,000 of them. Some genes are small, only about 300 letters long. Others are well over a million. The length and sequence of a gene determine the size and shape of the protein it builds. The size and shape of the protein determine the function that protein will have inside the body. Hemoglobin, for example, is a protein structure found in red blood cells. 
Its unique shape and size allow it to capture oxygen molecules when blood flows near the lungs, and then release them later when blood flows near oxygen-starved tissues. Pepsin is a digestive protein. Its unique shape allows it to break down food inside your stomach so it can be absorbed by the body. Keratin is a structural protein. Its unique shape and size allow it to link together with other keratin proteins to form hard structures like fingernails, claws, and beaks. Different creatures have different genes, which is ultimately why their bodies look and function differently. But one of the many reasons scientists believe all life on Earth is related is that the basic DNA, the language of A's, C's, T's, and G's, is pretty much the same for all living things. Many creatures even share some of the same genes. You might not be too surprised to learn that humans and chimps, which are closely related, share 96% of their genetic code. But what would you think a lowly fruit fly has in common with a beautiful swimsuit model? Surprisingly, about half of its genes. Because all creatures use DNA in pretty much the same way, genetic engineers have found that if they take a gene from, say, a bacteria cell and insert it into the DNA of an animal or a plant cell, that animal or plant cell will then read the new gene and produce the bacterial protein. Engineers have mixed and matched the genes of different organisms to produce many new creatures, including corn that is toxic to insects but supposedly safe for human consumption, tomatoes that last up to twice as long in the grocery store before going bad, and a new form of bacteria that produced the human protein insulin which we then collect from these bacteria and give to people with diabetes who need extra insulin to survive. So just to sum things up a bit, what exactly is a gene? A gene is a special stretch of DNA, not the entire strand of DNA, just a segment that codes for something. Each gene is like a unique recipe, which usually tells a cell how to make a protein or a group of proteins. Different creatures have different genes, but all genes are written in the same basic DNA language of A's, C's, T's, and G's. I'm John Perry, and that's genes stated clearly.